Welcome back to another episode of Ask GC Anything. Yes, and this week we'll be talking off the back of the GCN show about age-related training questions. We'll also be talking about VO2 max, and we'll be talking about what £100 gets you now well, that it didn't 10 years ago. We will indeed. Uh, if you've got any questions to get in for next week's show, you can use the hashtag TalkBack on social media, or even easier than that is just to leave them in the comment section below this video. However, if you've got a training-related question, you can use the hashtag AskGCNTraining, and you will then be in with a chance of winning three months free subscription to Zwift. So that's worth doing. In fact, our first question is the winner of that free three-month subscription to Zwift. So well done to Bjarne Kjeldsden. Uh, hi, it's rare to see training tips adapted to different age groups. I'm 45 and I'm noticing how my body is changing. I recover more slowly. I'm losing explosiveness and mobility, to name a few. It's not looking too good for Bjarne no. at the moment, is it? Uh, but I've read an article about how a man of my age uses short 15-second max effort sprints up hills as an important part of his half marathon training. So is this something an old cyclist can learn from? Do you have suggestions on how to include such sprints in my training and also how they should be performed? Well, the answer is a resounding yes. There's a lot to be gained for an older cyclist incorporating sprint work and strength work into their training. Yeah, because it's no secret, is it, that you do start to lose muscle mass, unfortunately, well, as you get older. Yeah, not that you had any, Dan. Blimey, not long <laughs> started. But I get you right, you can't lose what you haven't got, I guess, can you? Uh, but the good news is that you can reduce this phenomenon, which is known as sarcopenia, by remaining physically active. Uh, on the other hand, if you don't remain physically active, you can actually lose up to 5% of your muscle mass per decade after the age of 30. So well, James here is all right. Yeah, exactly. 30 yet. Well, use it or lose it is a phrase that really comes to mind. But by building strength work and sprint work into your training, it actually increases your capacity, your aerobic capacity, sorry, and your mitochondrial density. Mm. Right? No, not quite. <laughs> Close enough, James. Yeah, <laughs> mitochondrial cells being known as the powerhouse cells within the body yeah. because they are responsible for the release of energy from food. And now since a reduction in muscle mass will also lead to a decline in the quality and quantity of your mitochondrial cells, it makes sense that continuing to use strength work to maintain your muscle mass will in turn hopefully maintain your performance on the bike or even perhaps increase it. I've got another training related question now and also another age related question from Connor Williams. Uh, simply asked, does VO2 max change at all according to age? Well, good question and there's a, well, that can be a quick answer. It's basically yes, but then there's a lot that can go into it and that's genetics, that's your age, that's training status, there's also body composition, so there's loads to yeah. To actually, yeah. There is a lot, but we did a, do a bit of research on this and apparently your VO2 max can decline 1% per year from the age of 25, which means, well, you've only lost 1%, One, haven't you? Yeah. I've lost five already. Five percent? Are you sure about that? Like 13. Yeah. 13%. Percent. Although I might not have because apparently you can also, similar to the answer to the previous question, reduce that decline in VO2 max through training. Mm. Uh, speaking of which, training can actually, well you can change your VO2 max by up to 20% through physical activity That's and training. So there is hope out there for mm. us all. Uh, speaking of which, we've got a video on how to increase your VO2 max, which you can see coming up now. Now before we tell you, we should probably explain exactly what it is. So VO2 max is a measure of how much oxygen your body is able to consume during a maximal effort. And it's measured in millilitres per kilogram of body weight per minute. So now it's time for the quick fire round. And the first question is from Okami. I've recently been starting to train more. Sprints were part of that training, but for some reason I saw my sprint performance decrease from being able to reach 45 kilometers an hour in the beginning to, well, just 41 now. Dan, do you know what the reason for this is? Well, first you've got to be careful uh, in using speed to judge your performance, because there's so many factors involved in that, like air pressure, and rolling resistance, and wind direction, etc. Uh, but nevertheless, you might also, if you used a power meter, also be seeing a slight decline in your sprint power. 
because it sounds like you haven't yet absorbed all the training that you've done, so you're basically just tired. Uh, because when you sprint, you are using your fast twitch muscle fibers, which basically, uh, well, they get tired a lot quicker, mm. don't they, than your slow twitch endurance muscle fibers. Uh, so what you need to do is absorb all the training you're doing and be fresh enough to really perform uh, that short effort sprint. Because I've always found that the shorter the effort, the fresher you need to be to perform at your best. So you need to be much fresher to do a hill climb of two to five minutes, for example, uh, than you do for a five hour endurance road race. And then you go down to 10 seconds, you really need to be very fresh to perform at your best. I agree with that. Right, next up, uh, we have this from Mike Smith. How much faster would 100 pounds make me today compared to 10 years ago? It's an interesting one, this. Mm. We were a bit stumped, but we think we've come up with something. Yeah, I had a lot of, I had a, well, I had a big think about this one. And I was thinking about buying a 100 pound skin suit. And nowadays they put a lot of technology into creating the right airflow, clean airflow over the body to make you that much faster. So yeah. They're a lot more. That was all we could come up with. A wasn't lot better. It? Than I think ten years ago, skin suit. definitely makes a big difference, doesn't mm. it? The fabric that you're using, etc. Hence why a lot of time trials now are pretty much covered head to toe in light because they it's are. faster than skin. Beyond that, a hundred pounds, as you all very well know, doesn't get you very far, unfortunately, in the world no, of cycling sadly. componentry. Uh, next up, uh, ask GCN training is the hashtag from Master JM13. How can I build up stamina as a kid? Well, stamina isn't just all about getting. You know, getting a lot of exercise really. It's also about keeping a healthy weight, keeping a healthy diet. So those are also contributing factors. Mm, yeah, but you shouldn't be worrying too much about stamina, I don't think, no. as a kid. Like, you know, depending on what age you are. Mm. <coughs> if you're 17 or 18, of course, you could start to train properly. But if you're 12, 13, just go out and enjoy riding your bike and stamina and endurance is gonna come with it. You shouldn't be mm. thinking too much about it. Next up, uh, dearest Lou. Hey, I was wondering, should you choose a bike based on its frame or its components? This is a question we've had actually a couple of times before. Again, it's an intriguing one. The answer is always depends how much you eventually want to spend on your bike, doesn't it? So if, you, if you've got a set budget and you want to use that and then only really spend more money on maintaining the bike you've got, you want a nice balance between frame and components, don't you? Whereas if you've only got so much now, but you think you might have some more in the future to spend on your bike, yeah. go for the best frame. Best frame, I would say that, yeah, I would start off like a cake basically, build from the base up and the frame's a big part of the bike. So I would look at if I was a climber or a sprinter and choose a different frame on that in, for, for that instance and then build up from there. Mm. Uh, right, next up, what do you do when you get sick or injured during training for an event? How do you get back on track as soon as possible? That comes in from Slam031 underneath last week's show. Well, I would go completely straight away and say rest is best. Wait until you are completely 100% healthy before getting back on the bike. The last thing you want to do is prolong the illness. So, so yeah, would you agree with that? Yeah, I always was given a piece of advice by a coach many years ago. Uh, on the day at which you feel like you should be able to go out and train hard again, do leave it until the next mm. day, uh, which has always been a bit of advice that I think has worked for me personally, because it's all too easy to panic and try to get back into it as soon as possible, isn't yeah. it? And try to compensate on what you've lost. You've got to write that bit off and start again with a new training plan and not try to do double the amount that you were no, planning on I, doing in the first place. I would 100% agree with that. Right, last question for the quick fire round, which whenever I'm involved is not very quick at all. <laughs> uh, it comes from Clement46. Is it better to eat more before or after you go cycling? Uh, thank you, love you guys. Well, thank you for yeah. that. Um, well, I know you know this answer to the question. I don't, Do I, I've got no idea. I, I was, again, thinking quite um, deeply about this mm. earlier. I mean, you need to eat properly before the ride, whether that's the night before and also the morning. To get, you give ride. you that energy. Yeah, to give your glycogen stores yeah. uh, up to speed before you then use them all. And therefore, once you've used them all, you also need to replenish them afterwards if you want to perform at yeah. your best. If there's any nutritionist out there that can tell us whether, if you only have one choice, eat before or eat after, what's better? You can let us know. So the next question is from James Hickman. Hashtag talkback. As a cyclist starting to get into longer rides, should I start looking at power meters, heart rate monitors, or cadence sensors? Are they worth the investment? It's not that it depends answer. It is, I think. It's one yeah. It depends what your long-term goals in cycling are going to be. I mean, if you're the sort of person that just likes to go out on the bike, enjoy the fresh air, the scenery, and the sense of exploration you get from riding, riding a road bike or a gravel bike, you don't necessarily need to have any data to do that. You will naturally build an endurance and stamina that will allow you to do longer rides. Yeah, but 
On the other hand, if you did want to make those big improvements in fitness, then there's no doubt that a power meter is going to help that. No, no, I think you're right there. Um, they're not for everybody. Some people don't like to become slaves to numbers for obvious reasons, but mm. if you really are determined to get better as soon as possible, using a power meter in conjunction with doing some research so you know exactly how to use it to best benefit you, will lead to those improvements yeah. much quicker. Yeah, and preparing a training program. Mm. You can, that's, a power meter is gonna help having that data, so yeah. Well, if you're looking for six reasons to buy a power meter, uh, if you're not already convinced, we've actually got that coming up in our next video. In the words of Dr. Andy Coggan, one of the pioneers of training with a power meter, testing is training and training is testing. And a power meter allows you to do your testing out on the open road without the need to head to a laboratory. Well, that is the end of this week's Ask GT Anything. Uh, we happen to have had a lot of questions about training, but your questions can be anything cycling related uh, to do with equipment, etc. too. So leave all of them in the comment section down below or to remind you, the hashtag is TalkBack on social media. Yes, and if you did want the chance to win three months free subscription from Zwift, then use the hashtag AskGCNTraining. And if you did like this video, then don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And I actually had the pleasure of going to go and chat to the pros, asking them if they're a spinner or a grinder. So if you wanted to check that video out, then click down here. Mm, worth watching just for Sagan's response. <laughs>